Hi there, and welcome to Make It With Miss Mandy. For today's paper craft, we're going to be putting together this super cool retro style gramophone. So all you need for this craft is some cardstock. Uh, for me, it takes about eight sheets, but depending on how many colors you wanna use or how big or small you wanna make it, that could vary a little bit. Um, hot glue, lots of it. Um, a bone folder, if you'd like. I like to use this to get nice crisp edges. And then a toothpick. And a cutting machine, of course. I use a Cricut Maker, but you can also use um, a Silhouette or Brother Scan and Cut, whatever you happen to have. So, as always, you can download the template for free on my website. And with that, let's get started. All right. As you can see, I have all of my pieces cut out now, courtesy of my Cricut machine, and we're ready to get started. So I'm gonna set some of these aside, and right now I'm going to start just with the sound box pieces. Um, so that's these two long side pieces, um, these liners, um, these embellishment elements for the top, and this placard that's going to be going on the front. I'm just gonna start with my back piece. It's a little bit messy because I didn't set my um, cutting settings to to handle this thick of cardstock. I usually use a lighter cardstock than this. <laughs> my bad. So I'm just gluing this to the inside. my design like that and then I'm just going to find the pieces that match the outside and glue those on as well Okay, set that piece aside. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my front piece. So I have to make sure that um, I'm going, I'm putting my embellishments on the correct side of my paper. I want these to end up matching up so that they will wrap around and make a complete box. So I just wanna make sure that I'm putting these on the correct side so that I don't have to rip them off and start over. All right, now that those are on, um, I'm just going to put this little layered placard together. It's really simple. It's just these two pieces. As you may have noticed, I like to um, layer my pieces together and make sure that I have them lined up perfectly before I add my glue. I've just found that by doing this, um, it helps to make sure that I keep things in line before the glue gets stuck and it's already attached because once the hot glue starts to set, uh, you don't have a lot of time <laughs> to realign things. Okay, now before I attach this to the front of my um, sound box, I'm going to add a little bit of hand-drawn elements. I am always a little bit nervous to do this for a lot of my paper projects because I'm afraid I'm going to ruin them or something. Um, but I think it's worth the risk for this one, I guess. <laughs> I just think it adds a really cute little element so you know that this is where the dial would go. You can make this look however you'd like. I'm just kind of coming up with it on the spot. It doesn't look exactly like the one I did before, but I think that's what makes it fun. Okay, yeah. 
I actually didn't really want it to look exactly like the one I did before because that one looked so much like Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty cute. Um, and with that done, I'm just going to glue it onto the front of my sound box. All right, now I'm just going to add my folds. So I did use, in, in the file, in the template that um, I provide, there is a version that includes score lines. And if you have a machine that is set up so that you can use score lines, I would highly recommend using that version of the file. It just makes it so much simpler. Um, so it's hard to tell now because I've glued over everything, but like you can see, in these pieces, there are these lines and imprints that the machine has already made for me, so I know exactly where I need to put my folds. Plus, it'll just, just help them to be extra crisp. All right. Okay, not too bad. And that will go together nicely. Um, but before I connect these two pieces, just move some of these out of the way, um, I'm going to take my top piece, and you can tell the top piece from the bottom piece because the top piece, oh, hello, little circle. Didn't know you were under there. Um, the top piece will have just this little hole in the center. So I'm gonna set the bottom piece aside. We're gonna use that one later. Take the top piece. I'm gonna put my folds in it. So with these ones, I'm going to fold it inward with this fold and this one is going to go the opposite direction. I don't need to crease this one quite as much um, but that's about what it's going to look like. I'm going to do that with each side inward outward. Okay, now that that is all folded, I'm just gonna take this first side that has the front and the right side on it, and I'm gonna start with this, and glue this inside tab to the inside part of my front piece, and that's where I'm going to start. Um, to make sure it's lined up correctly, I'm just going to flip it over, and that way I'll be able to see it a little bit better. I do want to make sure this is pretty precise so that it all comes together the way it's supposed to and you don't have to try to jerry-rig it later. <laughs> okay. So far so good. Do the next side. Perfect. Okay, with those two sides done, I'm now just gonna do the same thing with the back and the left side. So now that's all put together and we're just going to set it aside for a second. And now we're gonna work on the support structure for the horn, and that is just comprised of these two funny looking pieces. So to do this, first I'm going to um, fold along the score marks of this little piece, and we're going to make kind of a square column, I guess is what you could call it. And to do that, we're just going to take this little tab at the end, add a dab of glue, and seal it together. All right. I'm just gonna crease these um, little tabs. So the next part, actually let me fold these first 
It's always good to get your folds in. So as you might be able to tell already, this is going to end up fitting into the back side of your sound box and into this square right here. And so because of that, these tabs are going to be bent backward. And I'm gonna have to straighten them out in a second to fit it through the hole, but um, I just wanted to pre-bend them to give them at least, actually, I don't have to for this one. I can just slip it in this way, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Cool, keep them bent. Um, there we go. Now just to glue these tabs down. All right, and now that this piece is connected, all I need to do to finish this up is glue this tab on the inside of the larger shape. Like that. Cool. And now it's ready to be inserted into the back of your sound box just slip in like that and then to secure it you're just gonna flip your box over and then glue your tabs down my little support structure is finished and secured to the back side of my sound box and I'm ready to now work on my record and the little post that will hold it in place all you need to do for the record is glue the little sticker that goes on top to the center and just make sure that it is lined up perfectly with the hole in the center. Simple enough. that's done. So for the little post in the center, I'm just going to get a sharp pair of scissors and cut off the sharp tip of my toothpick. I'm actually going to use the other end. It's probably a better way to do this, but found that if I just kind of hack it a little bit, eventually it pops off. There we go. Okay. Okay. And with this, I'm just going to put a generous dab of hot glue down close to the middle. stick this right in. Now that this has had time to dry, I'm just going to flip this over, add some hot glue around the edge, and then carefully insert the stick through the hole on the top. Put some pressure on it and make sure that it's secure. Now you've got a post to put your record on. The next step is making the little crank to go on the side. To do this, I'm just going to take um, my square shape and my little black rectangle And I'm going to start rolling this as tightly as I can. Depending on how thick your paper is, um, the amount that I've provided may be too much. And we'll see in a second if this is too much. 
um, you can just test it after you've rolled it up and see if it fits in the hole provided. If it doesn't fit, if it's too big, then just go back and trim off some of the excess. If you have thinner paper that you're using for this, then you might need to use the whole sheet. But if you're using cardstock of any sort, you'll probably need to trim some off. Just keep doing that until you get the thickness you want. And then we're just going to glue down the edge so that it stays rolled up. Okay, I have my paper rolled up and I did want to mention that um, as you're measuring and trying to fit it into the hole, um, before you cut off more excess than you want, um, if you're going to air, air on the side of it being a little bit too small because once you add glue to the inside, that's going to add a little bit more uh, thickness. Now we're just going to add the black paper as an accent to our crank. I'm just rolling it first so that it has a little bit of a curve before I glue it on. And then I'm just going to attach it gluing it down at intervals all the way around the paper. Okay, my crank is just about done. The last thing I'm going to do is just put a couple of folds into it, just to give it a fun bend. Once I've done that, I'm just going to stick it into the side of my sound box, and it's done. This next part is a little bit tricky but you've got this, you can do it. What we're going to do first is we're going to take each of these, um, I'm just gonna call these petals, they look kind of like flower petals to me, and at the tapered end, we're just going to overlap the bottom and glue it together. We're gonna to do that with each one of these. I just finished gluing all of my tapered ends and this is gonna help the horn um, flare out a little bit and give it the shape that we're looking for. Um, now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a couple of these ends and I need to connect these together and so I'm just going to overlap um, two of the end petals to create the round shape that we need. As you can see, I did a gold horn in my original design, uh, which is really fun and beautiful and I love the way it looks. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just using a more normal style of cardstock and that's just because the metallic uh, cardstock is just a beast to work with sometimes. And anyway, I didn't want a video of me fighting with it this whole time, so. <laughs> Um, and plus, I just thought it would be fun to mix up the colors a little bit, do something different, you know? But yeah, mostly the, the gold is beautiful, but man, it can be very frustrating to work with. Plus, as you can tell, I don't really use like any sort of gloves or finger protectors or anything when I am working with hot glue, even though I probably should. Um, and the metallic paper, since, you know, it's metallic, conducts heat a lot more <laughs> than regular cardstock. And so when you're pressing pieces together, it is killer on your fingertips. Now this is a good time to start curling your edges back. Um, what we're going to end up wanting this to look like is that it's flaring out and that the ends of the petals are, are curved back. And you can do this by using like the edge of your bone folder like that and just curling them around slowly. Or you can just kind of start taking the end and rolling it. around your fingertips. So go ahead and go around however you wanna do it and kind of curl the petals so that they flare out. 
once you have the edges of your horn all curled, you can go ahead and just set this aside for a second. And now we're going to work on making our little cap design. Um, at least that's what I'm calling it because it looks like a cap when it's done. <laughs> okay, so you just take, you can see the little score marks along the edges. You're just going to take this piece, fold it up, and then you're going to fold all of these down and go around the whole edge of the circle, gluing down each of these tabs as you go so that at the end, you will have this little bottle cap shape. All right, my bottle cap shape is done. And this is what I'm going to use to secure the bottom of my horn shape. So I'm just going to take these little tabs and bend them inward. And then one at a time, I'm just going to glue them into the inside, hopefully you can see that, into the inside of my bottle cap shape just by adding a dab of hot glue on the tip and on the side right here. So it secures it both to the base and to the little wall of the bottle cap shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue those all the way around and I'll meet you when I'm done. So I just finished going around and gluing each of my little end tabs into my bottle cap piece. And as you can see, it's kind of a hot mess in there. And that's okay, because I have this little piece that's going to act as a liner and cover it up. Cover up that mess. And my goodness, this was so much easier <laughs> than the time, than last time when I made the horn out of metallic paper. So much easier. Definitely give metallic paper a try if you want. It looks beautiful, like I said. It's just a little bit more of a fight. <laughs> All right, and with that, your gramophone horn is complete. How awesome is that? Okay, now we're almost done. Just a couple more steps. Okay, I'm going to add the little arm and needle to my design. Um, I'm just going to take this piece and when I was using the metallic paper, I needed this to be double sided so that it would be metallic on both sides. Uh, since I'm just using regular paper this time, I'm just going to use one. Just going to bend that back and I'm just going to get an idea of where I want it. Okay. I just wanted to visualize that real quick. Okay. And now I've got my needle design. All I need to do for this is glue this little, um, white embellishment piece on top. Okay, now I'm gonna bend this piece back as well. This is what's going to attach to the back side of my needle. And it seems like it would make more sense to do this part right now, but I'm actually gonna put this on first, just so I can get my needle in the exact position I want. Since this isn't actually a working gramophone and the needle isn't actually going to move, I need to make sure it's in the place I want it to be on the first try. Okay, now that that's in place, um, you can kind of angle your needle or keep it straight up, whatever you want. Um, but I think I'm gonna wanna glue it just a little bit lower than the very middle of this circle. Perfect. Now I'm going to add the base piece to the bottom of my sound box. This actually probably would have been better to do before I just put the needle on, but too late now. This is folded the exact same way that you did the top piece, folding the edges in and then out. And if you're curious for any reason how I do my score lines, um, with the Cricut, there's a couple different options. You can either use a scoring stylus, or if you have a Cricut maker, there's a couple different kinds of scoring wheels you can use. Whoopsie. Um, I first started using um, a Cricut Explore Air, and with that, I bought 
a scoring stylus and that's what I had always used to make my score marks. Um, now that I have a maker, I do have scoring wheels and I have used them uh, multiple times. But I actually, even though they make they do make better score lines, don't get me wrong. Um, you have to take the tool in and out of the machine in order to um, swap it out with your blade. And it's so annoying to me and I'd rather just let my machine run that I almost always just go back to using my scoring stylus. Uh, it does a fine enough job and I'm just lazy, I guess. But anyway, that's just me. I don't know if any of you are the same way or if I'm just lazy. Anyway, so you're just going to glue these in the same way that you did the top, except for now, it's going to be a little bit harder because your shape is much more enclosed. But just take it one edge at a time and I'll show you a little trick at the end. So since we are making an enclosed shape, the last edge is of course the trickiest to glue down. Um, I have managed to slip the little tab in there and now I'm just going to pinch the bottom. Add some glue to my inside edge. And then I kind of figured this out last time when I was doing this, I was trying to figure out how I was gonna put pressure on the back of that. So I took um, my toothpick, slipped it into the little edge right here, and just put a little bit of pressure on the back side of my paper so that it would seal together. It doesn't, of course, get a perfect seal, and this will be the weakest edge on the bottom of your box, but for our purposes, it will do. <laughs> There you go. Now the last thing to do is just to attach your gramophone horn. All you need to do for this is position it where you'd like it to be, um, off to the side a little bit, or you can have it right up front, however you want. Uh, once you've kind of found a position that you like, and if you have one edge that you don't like or something, then you, know, you can kind of hide that by uh, having that be the one that is on the bottom. Um, just take the back side where we have this circle right here, add some glue, and attach your gramophone horn. Sorry, my hand is blocking it. I have to do it, it has to be done. And it does have a little bit of give, so if you want to turn it a little bit, you certainly can. And with that, your gramophone is complete. Yay! I'd love to see how yours turned out. Um, I always love this, to see the cool ways that people um, implement my cut files and make my projects. Um, feel free to share them on my website or by uh, tagging uh, Designs by Miss Mandy on Instagram. Once again, thanks for watching and happy crafting.